All right, welcome to another video on how to become a business consultant freelancer. So I'm going to jump straight forward to the section four, how to conduct a research and gather quality data. And make a quick recap of that. First, especially when you, when you are going to qualify the data, Identify is the most valuable to the least valuable when you are conducting a research for a consulting project. So data that come from the company are the most valuable. The second is from trust sources, whether it are websites that have proven record of research report, peer review, and ultimately the aggregate sources. This is the least valuable because you can verify is, for example, who the author really is. But for research uh, on new industry where they, they is too close or is brand new, so you may want to use at least this kind of source and now see from a broad perspective how to conduct a research which is look things from different perspective meaning play devil advocate with yourself as well as the uh, gather relevant data Keep notes and record every source you obtain. Don't forget to evaluate the quality of the source that you get in this information. And ultimately circle back with the client, right? So once you know how to conduct a research, okay? And for example, Paul Mendes create is a guideline where he made a guideline from the marketing perspective, when he look at a particular website here, okay, uh, he mentioned a couple things that he, he does. Like, first, look at the genetics, okay? look at their website, understand what they're offering, all their products and service, and then go into the specific about the categories, the pricing, the company review, understand what makes this company unique. And if you can have access to the first party data, that's great because you can look what they have done in the past, see how they have been performing, and from there you can provide your suggestions. So once you conduct this research based on their brands, their prices, categories, all the products and service, it is time to do a competitive analysis to figuring out who the other players in that industry are. And from there, you're gonna see what they're doing uh, and see what you can learn from them by doing a keyword research that ultimately you you can use tools like keyword research tool from Google or any other uh, from any other company out there, okay? And to understand what's going on in that industry. So on top of that, then is when you're gonna look at the worst news to get up to date data, okay? And see everything that you have researched, what is most likely to work today. And that is including look at the how this industry is adapting to re regulations and where this industry is going. So once you conduct that research, okay, now it is time to know how to create visually engaging presentations in a way that show your clients, hey, yes, this is how it came with these conclusions. And by showing charts and the statistics while, while revealing the meaningful pattern of this, 
So you can reach to an agreement with a client to ultimately provide as your solution and implement that. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Okay. And just to mention, at least from a broad perspective, how to create a report is first, before you create your report, you must know exactly what data is going to be in that report. That's first. Second, put the most relevant data first because you don't want the client start to forget what was what the important thing was. Okay. And by using is uh, different charts and aesthetics, you can expand that based on this uh, impactful data that you show them first. If you have recurring client, it is important to have a format for that. And don't forget to use visualizations, charts and graph. So why? Because Data visualization helps to make not only you, but also the client more well-informed decisions. So we have several data charge or graph that we can use, such as in the pain of the use case, things like bar graph, when you want to show change over times of different categories, as well as pie charge, when you want to see compare or when you want to compare part to a whole when you want to make part to a whole comparison with discrete or uh, continuous data a line graph when you want to show a time series relationship like line accelerations decelerations uh, volatility trends Area charge, which is a line graph, again, to show time series relationship, but with volume. So you can represent three variables here. I also look at scatter plot, which is useful when you want to see correlation of the data. But again, correlation doesn't mean causality. But that's, an all, that's another whole different interview a video but with this for example if you want to see uh, the customer satisfaction so you have for example on the x-axis the uh, customer satisfaction or time to respond on the x-axis and on the g-axis you have is uh, customer satisfaction and most of the time all of this are scattered close to the less time. So the more faster the customer service uh, reply and responds their inquiries and solves their so issues and complaints, the more customer satisfaction we will have. I also look at bubble charge, which is a combo mix between the area charge and scatter plot helpful and great for showing ranking data or nominal data data that doesn't have an inherent order okay such as a color graph color cards ethnicity fruit and so for example Okay, this is also useful for show is uh, this correlation of data. So let's say you want to look at time span on the internet and on the G axis you have is age and the gender on the bubble, right? heat map which is another charge that uh, allow us to display nominal uh, categorical data so data that can be grouped in different uh, 
classes, whether it is nominal, something that I mentioned before, or ordinal, like so data that have an inherited order, such as job seniority, entry level, mid, so entry, junior, mid, senior, C executive, uh, or <clears throat> uh, health status, uh, poor, fair, good, very good, excellent, rating, uh, such as one or five stars, that kind of thing. So this is helpful for organize this categorical data uh, that represent that can be represented using intensity of color in uh, maps or data tables, right? So for example, what you want to show is the number of or how much company uh, so how much or how the number of export the number of apple export a company uh, based on a particular region based on a particular state or in a country right so you can use intensity of color to show that uh, and uh, geomap where you're going to show distribution of data in a map uh, such as the number of retailers a particular brand has over a state or city or county waterfalls where you want to show performance uh, over time tables for example to compare sales representative uh, or where blocks you are coming from as well as pictographs pictograph where here is using a statistic with icon okay for example uh, according to cleanwater.org where they show is one in nine people on earth does don't have access to clean water. So they use is nine drops. Okay. So I also uh, look at the do's and don'ts of visualization. So use a structure. Uh, use uh, or use a, a structure or create a structured uh, report, benchmark with, or uh, compare your data with benchmark, and make it easy to follow, make it easy to read. So don't use other data, also don't lose your data after you present it and some uh, communication tips uh, for consultants like break down complex topics especially if you are going to talk to an audience that doesn't have that doesn't hold any background uh, so make it easier and digestible so especially for jargon industry Break down in things that can be easy to follow and digest. Make sure that you and show that you understand the goal, right? As well as avoid miscommunication. Understand the communication and work habits of your clients. For example, your client is your client wants to. Uh, uh, contact you through emails or they want to do this video call uh, so keep track of every communication that you have with your clients very very important okay as well as be a team player 
in the same brief of things. So once I look at that, okay, and I understand these communication tips for consulting, all right? So if you want to build recurring clients, it's important to follow this A-B testing, okay? Where now this A-B testing, right? Yeah, where now this A-B testing, okay? Yeah, we're now this A-B testing, okay? Uh, it's a great way to build this recurring client where you have the A, the original or the unauthorized version, uh, B, the expected optimized version, okay? So you can do as many tests as you want, but there's some good practice to make it much more efficient and better. First, do one test at a time and test one variable because, for example, you want to see the impact of an element, uh, whether it's on a landing page or an email marketing, okay? You want to see how or in which element increase the user retention, uh, user conversions, or decrease that. You can pinpoint. You can pinpoint back uh, to that, and make minor change as well. So make minor change. So split your test uh, randomly, 50-50. Okay. That's right. So, uh, split your split that uh, randomly, 50-50. Split your test and do the test simultaneously in the sign on the importance before so before doing the test or before testing the sign on significance for that. So okay, so that's great because I passed through this and I went through this model the how to conduct a research and gather quality data okay by looking at how you can gather quality data and then how you can conduct a research from a broad perspective as well as an example of how you can do that understanding is the particular guidelines that after all this is a marketing research uh, but the particular guidelines of how at least paul mendes do Okay, when it comes to conduct a research, okay, uh, and then how you can create your reports and the importance of doing that. So, what is the end goal of this, and what are the things that you can use in your report so you can leverage it, uh, like different charts and statistics, especially chart. Uh, in graph, bar chart, bar, yeah, bar chart, pi, or bar graph, yeah, bar graph, pi charge, uh, area charge, line graph, bubble, um, bubble charge, heat maps, geo maps, tables. A waterfall, a pictogram, and some communication tips for consultants, as well as the A-B test okay, to get more recurring clients and to build this recurring client. So, the whole point of this is to remember that when you're going to do this A-B testing, 
okay, is to measure that over time. And remember that this is a cycle, a continuous cycle to improve. And when it comes to the section five, which is developing your brand, your personal brand as a freelancer. So here, um, let me ask a couple of questions here, because he mentioned is this A-B testing for a consultant. Okay. And I memorizing uh, all of this testing and also see the importance of this kind of test and how quickly can we uh, interact with that okay So, let me keep look. Uh, yeah, let me keep looking at this. Mm -hmm. So, building a community for maximum impact. Answer sessions, sessions or ask, ask me anything, anything session. session. Build, build your community, your community so, you so you can create something bigger than yourself and have maximum impact. Building, building a community and building a group helps you raise your personal brand. brand. Because, because as a consultant, consultant your reputation is something that, that you're obviously, you're obviously working, working on building, building throughout your journey. journey. And, and once, once you, you have, have done the work in the previous lessons to build your online presence, to identify your dream 100, to start collaborating with those people, now you should be able to be seen as somewhat of an authority figure, a thought leader in your industry. And from there, that's when you can start to provide value to others by creating a community. You can become the consultant slash mentor for your specific field or your specific skill set. And that is just going to help keep increasing and raising your personal brand and raising the awareness of who you are and what type of people that you help. The first step is understanding what a community is and how you can start to funnel people to join your community. So a community consists of curating people from your current network to join a specific theme community for your consulting industry or for your expertise. So what you want to do is get everyone from your email list, from your YouTube subscribers, from all of your other social media followers, and from your additional contacts that you have in your CRM, and you want to funnel them all into a community and a like-minded group of people. There are a few different places that you can choose to host your community on, and some of the most common platforms are Facebook groups, Discord threads, or Slack channels. I encourage you to go with the platform that you're most comfortable with. However, if you haven't used one of them before, go ahead, sign up for a trial on one of the platforms, give it a try, maybe join someone else's group on Facebook, on Discord, and on Slack, and see which one you like the best. Because at the end of the day, you are going to be the one managing the group, you are going to be the one accepting people in, and also in the beginning, doing all of the work getting people engaged. So it's important that you use a platform that you are comfortable with and that you know that you can provide value on. And then from there, once you've chosen that, you can move on to the next step, which is to give people an incentive to join your group. People aren't just going to join a new group or community for no reason. You need to give them a reason to join your community and have them be around like-minded people. It will take you a good amount of effort up front to build this group to think about what you can offer as an incentive, but if you can build a group up to a place where other people are engaging from all over the world and they're sharing things organically, that's when the momentum is going to pick up and that is going to help other people have an incentive to join the group. So for example, you can offer a specific type of value that you post. So let's say you post one video a week that has free content and free tips in it. You can say that, or you can promote the aspect that you have a free PDF or a free download when someone joins your group. Or another example could be that someone gets access to your private newsletter when they join the group or a private Discord thread that goes along with the group. So you can get creative here and look at what other people are doing. Of course, you always want to do your research, see what other kind of groups in your community are doing, how they're promoting it, because just like with anything you do, it's all going to be about marketing and having other people understand where you're coming from so they have a reason to join the group. Then what you want to do is once your group is built, once you focused on starting to funnel people into your group from your audience and you have built an incentive for them to join, that's when you need to continue nurturing the community. So once it's built, you don't just set it and forget it. Then you want to make sure you're nurturing your community so you can get the most out of it. And then ultimately, so you can have other people start getting the most value out of it and engaging with each other and sharing their personal stories and experiences. So now let's get into some of the ways you can nurture your group and keep your group as active as possible. 
The first is to host workshops or live streams. This is very helpful because it gets people engaged in the group and it also can show off some of your personality and it comes off as you being more authentic than just creating a curated video, for example. A workshop or a live stream typically has the audience engaged and has you answering different questions and focusing on topics that your audience wants to see. The next is to conduct question and answer sessions or ask me anything sessions. This is where you're reaching out to your group, to your community, and you're seeing what's on their mind. What questions do they want answered? And then what you're doing is you're going live either on video or you're filming a video and posting it, or you can even do a text based if you want to, and you're answering those questions with your level of expertise as a consultant, and you're providing some real world experience to answer their question. This not only is going to help answer people's questions and help them get more value out of the group, but it's also going to give you a much clearer idea of what people are thinking about and what type of content they want. So if you see a common question or a common theme, make sure that you take note of that. And in your future, in your content calendar, you're making sure you're focusing on answering that question in more depth. This is a great way to get more ideas for content and also to keep your community very engaged because you can get some one-on-one -on -one engagement here. And when someone joins a group and the leader of that group is engaging with them one-on-one, -on -one, they're answering their questions, they are so much more likely to be happy in that group and to even tell their friends and their other colleagues to join that group. Also, also remember to welcome, welcome all new members into the group because the beginning period of when they join is when they're going to form an opinion. And if you can get them engaged as quick as possible in the group, chances are they're going to be more active in the group and they're going to be more willing to share more about themselves because someone actually reached out to them. They're not just another number in a group, but you're treating them like a person and that helps keep the community engaged and active. Another type of content you can post to keep your group active and to also get a lot of information about the audience and what they want to see is to post polls and surveys. This is a super easy way, especially when you don't have much content ideas. It's a great way of you getting an idea, a lay of the land of what people want to see, what they don't want to see, as well as you can ask them where they're at in their journey. And then that will give you even more information to tailor your future content to make sure you focus on those specific things. Another way to keep the group active is to share your story and your unique expertise. Once again, the more you're able to come off as authentic and memorable, the more people are going to remember that the group is there, first of all, and then second of all, they're going to want to remain more active in the group because they feel that you're a real person. You're sharing your own story, your own expertise, and what that does is it opens up a level of relatability. When someone is able to relate to your story, that is when they're going to feel more compelled to comment on your post, to get in touch with you, to be a part of the group. Make sure you also take a step back and you're sharing a lot about your journey, about your story, and about some of the common struggles you've had along the way. That is going to help people relate to you, and that is going to help you have maximum impact. And lastly, posting about recent events and recent news in your industry and in your niche is a great way to keep a group active because there are always things happening in the industry and all you have to do is go out there, see what's trending, and then share that with the group and offer your viewpoint. Or you can turn it back on the group and ask them a question about how they feel about a specific recent event or something that happened in the news. Of course, you don't want to keep this political. You don't want to keep this about something that doesn't relate to your group. But if it does relate to your group, it is relevant in your industry. That is another great way that you can keep your group active. So I hope that was helpful showing you how you can build a community so you can have maximum impact as well as how you can keep your group engaged and active so it turns into the snowball effect and the momentum helps it keep growing and growing. Hey there, I wanted to take a second at the end of it. In this lesson, we will be discussing Yeah, the bridge collaboration. Don't, Don't skip, skip on this. this. This will help. Yeah, this is something, well, um, that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.